We are recording. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Grant Ganey. I'm a principal software engineer on the Pulp team, and we are here today to uh, uh, see a presentation by our summer 2020 intern, Jared Ubbin. Uh, Jared took over a lot of work on the Python, uh, Pulp Python plugin this summer, and has uh, has done a lot of good stuff. And so we expect him to wow us today. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jared. All right. Thank you, Grant. Uh, so like I said, uh, my name is Jared, and I've been the intern on the Pulp team for the previous summer. And for the last three months, I have been updating and adding new functionality to the Python plugin so that it can work with Pulp 3.0. So let's see. Can you guys see my screen? We can indeed. Yes. You should make it a and little bit. Is the text bigger. readable or do I need to zoom in? Zoom in a little bit. OK, um, let's start. So um, before I started, the Python plugin was a love plugin in Pulp 2.0. But uh, the rapid development of Pulp 3 has left the Python plugin feeling a bit left out and without any love. So this summer, I've been updating it to work with the latest versions of uh, Pulp Core. And right now, we have compatible versions for 3.4, 3.5, and soon we're going to release a new version for 3.6. Um, so what does updating the Python plugin entail? Well, it ensures that we have basic functionality of syncing Python package repositories, doing basic Pulp stuff, uploading Python packages, and then be able to consume these Python packages through pip install, the most common use case. Um, so these are all common features that were present in the previous version of the Python uh, plugin. And now they are fully supported in Pulp uh, 3.0. And new features to this uh, plugin is now being able to fully mirror all of PyPy. That'll work. And so you can host a full mirror and uh, on the pulp side, be able to create Python remotes from banner snatch config files. More about that later. And now we can able to sync from other pulp Python instances. Uh, so you have multiple uh, repositories across different pulp instances. You can now share your Python content throughout them. OK, now for the big new feature, mirroring all of PyPy. This feature. Uh, is now possible through Python plugins new integration with Bannersnatch, which is PyPy's official tool for mirroring all of PyPy, uh, which is really cool because basically PyPy has a lot of really, I'll, I'll call them slightly unfavorable or nasty APIs to interact with in order to extract the data from their, uh, their site. And Bannersnatch, it makes that all nice and clean. You don't have to worry about any APIs on their side or them even changing. <laughs> yes, Grant, suboptimal definitely is the word I'm looking for. Um, and so the benefit of integrating with Banner Snatch also is that any new changes or features will be implemented upstream on the Banner Snatch side first before being coming down to us downstream in Pulp side meaning we get all the good stuff without having to do much of the work. Uh, but uh, integrating with Banner Snatch wasn't actually so easy um, because, well, they didn't design the tool in order to be used by other parties. And it was really only built to be able to mirror PyPy. And so through some discussion initiated by Daniel and I, we found that there was actually a, a need in the, well, a need or a use in the Banner Snatch community for a general API to be able to sync Python packages from Python repositories. And with this uh, new need and discussion with the Banner Snatch community, we began a long process of refactoring the majority of their code to provide this new API that would be able to fill the needs of many different users, including us. Um, and while that took up the majority of my uh, internship uh, working with this 
new community on the Bandersnatch side. It was actually uh, quite enjoyable as those folks are very nice up there and they're very quick to respond, even if they are a bit shorthanded on uh, the resources they have. But their new API that we just got merged yesterday now enables us to sync from all of PyPy and use all of Bandersnatch's cool features which include an extensive package filtering. These uh, filters allow us now to be able, now allow Pulp Python to filter by the package name, its version, its type, platform, no, numerous different latest releases, and much more of the metadata that's present in Python packages. Um, also, being able to integrate with Bannersnatch allowed for the basic syncing from other Pulp instances. And, because we decided that we were going to integrate so heavily with Bannersnatch, we also created a new feature to be able to create Python remotes from Bannersnatch config files to allow users who have prior Bannersnatch mirrors to now migrate over to the Pulp Python plugin, but still keep their same config options as before. And with Bannersnatch, we'll be able to implement even more features um, later down in the road, including performance improvements, using serial fields that Bannersnatch natively supports. And we'll also be able to eventually sync all of PyPy in probably under an hour uh, on demand, of course. Um, syncing all of PyPy immediately probably will still take a couple hours, because last time I checked, there are 250,000 packages, roughly equates to uh, 25 terabytes of data. So you might still want a uh, hefty computer for that one. But through uh, Pulp's cool features of allowing on-demand lazy syncing, you'll be able to mirror all PyPy now in roughly an hour time. And that is the majority of the features that I've implemented for the Python plugin. Um, would you guys like to see a demo or? Yeah, demos. Some questions? Oh, Definitely. sorry. Let's do a demo. Demo time. Um, it's like hammer so time, it's... but with more text. <laughs> it's actually, is this screen, can I zoom in on this? I'm not exactly sure. Can you guys read you this control... text? Yeah, you, we can read it, but you can do a control shift plus if you want. Yep. There you go. Okay. That's that's good. Good. Thank Easy. you. My eyes appreciate that. No problem. OK. So I'm going to do a basic uh, demo showing off how to create a Python repository, sync uh, data to it, and then uh, and basically publish that data and then consume it through tools like pip. So we're going to start off, create a simple repository named foo. And we'll grab its it's pull href. Then we'll create a remote. And I'll make this remote sync from PyPy itself. But we're not going to sync all of PyPy. We're just going to sync a couple of packages. Well, I think I'll just sync one to make sure I don't spend all day waiting for the sync to finish. So in order to specify syncs, we have this includes parameter. And this just takes a list of packages. So I'm going to use shelf reader, which is a package that has no dependencies and is a love uh, package used by us to test stuff out. And let's see, do I need to include anything else? Hmm. Yeah, I think that should be good. OK, so now I have the remote. And now we'll start the sync. Uh, if I can remember what the API call was for. Been doing this all summer. <laughs> OK, sync API goes off of the repository href. And then you add the sync at the end. And you give it the remotes href. Uh, 
and that generates a sync task, which should hopefully finish very shortly. And it has completed. And we only got one, but uh, it created two contents because there are two different, uh, there's two different uh, distributions of the shelf reader, which I'll show a little bit later. Next, we need to publish the content. And so for that, I will create a publication. Oh, API. And this takes a Tori version as its parameter. And this also generates tasks. So let's go get the publication itself. And then after we get the publication, now we host the content on pulp. So that is created, that is done by creating a distribution. Distributions. There's a type on distributions. Oh, thank you. That's a bit awkward. Uh, okay, so name, no, I'll give this one. Type. Distribu <laughs> I swear I can type distributions. You're doing way better than uh, I am normally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. Okay, I'll give this, I'll give it a base path that will fall under, give it just name A, and then we'll get the publication, give the pul publication href, and this generates another task. And now we have the distribution. And it should also, oops, that's the distribution. Then it will also give you the link. That will, is where your content is distributed at. And oops, then if I go, oops. We can now see we have the shelf reader downloaded and the PyPy simple API that is used by PIP and PyPy itself when downloading content. And so now we can show how to install a PIP package using uh, pulp as your source. And the command, well, I guess first I should show that I don't have shelf reader installed or else it would give me an error. Whoops. Crap. Shelf reader. So it currently is installed. And now I will install it. From my pulp in sense, which takes the address, which is localhost 24816 slash pulp. Wait, I'm pretty sure I copy and pasted, so I have to type this all out again. That's fine. Uh, then we add simple at the end, and then the package we want, shelf reader. And there we go. Now we have shelf reader installed. And awesome. that is how you get content from PyPy into Pulp and then able to be consumed by PIP. Um, Are you able to show us how to do the uh, full mirror of content on demand, not necessarily to do the publishing and everything, but how do you create a remote that's going to do that? Uh, yes. So creating the remote is actually quite easy. It is just uh, 
same as the prior remote. Actually, I should just scroll up for the prior remote. Okay, here it is. I'll name this one full PyPy. Same org. And instead of specifying includes, you have none. You can still have an excludes list if you want or in, um, any other features. So say, I don't want to mirror uh, shelf reader in this one. And because the includes is empty, it will only, it will then uh, assume that you want to mirror all of this uh, repository. And I guess I should have probably made that on demand because now I can't start syncing or I'll tear up my hard drive. <laughs> That's all right. But this would take a while anyway. But now cool. when you do the sync operation, you'll see there's no includes. And so it will then go and get all of the packages um, from PyPy. But it'll still to, perform uh, excludes filtering. Just to clarify for the recording, Jared, so to do this on demand, you would use the command line you've just shown us with the addition of um, uh, policy is on demand. Oops. Right, exactly yes. right. Outstanding, okay. outstanding. Out I'm pretty sure I can still modify this remote if I want to, but. Um, you could do a yep. patch on it. Yep. Yep. Could do a patch on it. Yep. Or you could create a different one and call it, you know, full PyPy on demand. And that way you, you could use, depending on which one you wanted, there's, but the, that's all just the pulp core doing its thing. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool. Jared, do you have a, uh, a Bandersnatch config file that you could show us and also maybe show us um, creating a remote from a Bandersnatch config? Uh, I think I do. Well, if I don't, I know like, where I can find one. So let me... Wait, way to get him off script there, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh... Okay. Here is what a default config of, oh my goodness, I just exited out of that. A default config of a banner snatch um, looks like. And it's pretty, well, there's there's a lot of extra fields in here that are banner snatch related. But the major ones that would be changed from uh, use in pulp is the master. This will directly correlates to our URL uh, workers correlates to our download concurrency. Um, oh, and that, that just realized this default config doesn't have uh, plugins, but it would go under here. You would type in uh, plugins, and then enabled equals, and then you would specify the plugins that Banner Snatch has. Uh, you can also just type in all, and this will allow you to then use um, plugins that we use. And one is plugin that I was showing you is the includes and excludes, which under Banner Snatch are mm -hmm. known as allow list and block lists. And you can do stuff like uh, packages equals um, shelf reader, and it works just the same as uh, as specifying those fields uh, manually by creating a remote. Then the command, let's see, let me remember where this is. This is under bandersnatch source bandersnatch test default config. That's pretty far. Let me just make it a bit easier. I'll just copy and paste this to a new file. <laughs> OK, uh, create a new file, bander.config. Whoops. Then we'll save this file. Now we can create our 
remote from from our banner snatch config file. And this is, I think, from banner. Wait, let me just check the docs real quick, even though I just made this earlier. <laughs> Can never be too sure. Ooh, I've been wrong. It's from Bandersnatch. I wrote out the whole name. OK. And then this just takes in the name of the file. So I'll say, I'll give this name Bander. And then the actual file itself under config. And I'm actually not sure. Yeah, I think oh, there's I a special format. I think it's at, at equals, and then you give the path. To a file. Uh, where did I just save this thing? Bander.config. Yeah. Um, maybe it's just without the equal signs, just the at symbol. I think it is. Oh, yeah, dash dash form. Go up. Oh. And yeah, the beginning. There we go. And so now you see download concurrency is three, which mm. is what the workers was. Mm -hmm. The well, mm -mm. might have messed up the syntax there. The include should have a <laughs> should have a shelf reader in it which means I don't remember the syntax for banner config options, config files. But the URL is PyPy, which can for master. And then pre-releases true is uh, one of the filters. By default, that is false in, uh, when creating a normal remote. Cool. That's awesome. Any other uh, questions regarding Python yeah, I plugin? Do. Yeah. So you mentioned that now there is going to be a, the ability to sync from other Py, uh, Pub Python instances. And uh, what API does that use? It uses a JSON API. Well, when you sync it, um, Banner Snatch and what we were doing before, ask for the metadata, which is under this URL, pypy slash package name slash JSON. And this wasn't present before on the pulp content side. But now um, it's here which allows uh, basically basic syncing from other pulp instances. So if you have an include list, uh, you'll be able to basically sync any py package that is in from another Python uh, pulp repository. Um, there is ways to sync without knowing what packages are available, because this um, simple API actually gives you a list of all the packages available. And in the future, I would like to add a feature that is able to parse this API. It's a bit slow compared to what PyPy uses on their end to uh, give back all their package names. But as a backup feature, it would allow us to sync from multiple different repositories, even if they don't have all the APIs implemented by PyPy which include us, because we try to avoid implementing all of them since some of them are suboptimal. Cool. Does that answer your question, James? Well, my computer was uh, frozen for most of that, so I'm going to have to watch the video when it, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, released. So Jared, um, it, it, go ahead. Go ahead. I was I was gonna ask. So um, this is first off really really great. Um, what sorts of 
testing, um, is there any testing that is around this feature? What's the state of testing for this uh, plugin? Uh, so yes, there are a lot of new tests that I've been writing. Um, not all of them are complete, because uh, I'm pretty bad at writing tests. I can do it manually, but when it comes to automation, kind of struggling sometimes. But there is a test for these new APIs and being able to sync from one pulp instance to another. And those work fine. There's also a test for mirroring all of PyPy. But that test takes a couple hours to run. Uh, it isn't wise to, uh, to run often, but it does exist. And the one like struggle with it is that the number of packages available on PyPy is continuously changing. So it's not easy to write in a hard constant. Like every time you sync, you should have these many packages. Um, and so I'm looking into that. There's roughly 250,000 packages, give or take. Um, so that's the number that it just checks to see if it's over after it's finished syncing. But of course, that sync process takes an hour. And I've only run it about once or twice to see if it works. But by default, I have the tests skipped. Um, That's cool. That sounds great. Um, I think the fact that uh, there is a test for syncing from pulp to pulp is probably a good demonstration of being able to sync all of PyPI. It's a little different. I'm, I'm glad that different. we have. I'm glad we have both, and yeah, I'm yeah. just. I'm glad that we've got tests. That's outstanding. Um, yep. Is a fine thing, um, and maybe we could do some subset of syncing from PyPI just to show that that we're going through Bandersnatch to PyPI and getting a known set of packages back it might be worth doing. But that's down the road a bit. I'm glad we've got the main paths covered here. I agree. This is all. Once really we implement the serial feature that I was talking about earlier, that will improve sync times from subsequent sweet syncs. Um, we'll be able to create tests that basically um, put in a given serial that will dramatically reduce the number of packages have to be synced from PyPy. And I think those will be better tests that we can run mm. continuously um, on our side, because they will reduce it from a couple hundred thousand to maybe just like 100. And we can run that on demand within a minute or two. Nice. That sounds great. Yeah. For anyone familiar with the uh, the RPM plugins, um, sync optimization that checks the metadata number, it, this is similar. Right, and that's a that's a future enhancement. That's a, a thing to work on soon and isn't there currently. Is that correct? Yes. Very cool. Okay, um, Jared, you said you'd worked on some. Uh, can you give me a ballpark of the issues that you addressed in Paul Python outside of the new feature work over the course of your summer? Um, the major issues was just uh, the Python plugin not being updated for one or two years, um, bringing it up to date with the current API of PulpCore mm. and updating the documentation for these commands. Um, that was the majority of the issues facing Pulp Python was the fact that they were calling outdated uh, APIs and yeah, returning it's, errors. It's, it's, the amount of change felt like uh, a year or two, but really was only about six to eight months. <laughs> but there were a lot of changes that happened during that time. Also, let's be fair, this is 2020. It feels like it's been a century long, so. <laughs> Cool. So um, I guess one of my questions is um, kind of where do you, where, where, where does this plugin go from here? I've heard some things um, like uh, the, maybe the sync optim, the APIs that would allow for sync optimization. Um, also, I heard about the simple, the implementation of the parser for the simple API, maybe if I heard that right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, what other things are on your mind that, that you think would be nice features um, in the future? Or if um, you have. Is someone about the talk right there? 
Uh, let me think. There is some extra performance improvements that can be done. Um, there's a recursive syncing option that I think would be nice to have where the package metadata has required dependencies that um, uh, basically tell you if you install this package, you need all of these other packages. That's what pip uses when installing its uh, packages. And we can add a recursive sync option that will allow you to just specify one package, but then also download every other subsequent package needed by it in order so that when you go and later try to pip install from your pulp uh, instance, you'll be able to fully install it and not run into any errors because you'll also have all your requirements, but you won't need to know the requirements beforehand. Um, so that's another major feature that I think would be a nice uh, improvement. And then I think, I think there's a couple more pip or Python tools that also interact with, uh, with uh, Python repositories like Twine that we would like to also support, um, being able to use them to upload Python content to Pulp itself. So we uh, multiple different user groups can migrate and use uh, Pulp Python. Yeah, that sounds like a killer feature, being able to use Twine to upload, for sure. Yep, very cool. Cool, those are great answers. Thank you so much. Any uh, further questions? Well, I'd like to thank you for my time uh, or for your time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and for giving me a really good time this summer and uh, uh, helping me a lot and teaching me yeah. Lots of stuff. Oh, I have yes. one question. Sorry, somebody already asked this, but what's the full size of PyPI if you mirror it? Uh, uh, it's around 25 terabytes <laughs> or 26. That's yeah. a really big system. I'm not putting that on my Vagrant box. I hope nobody minds. Yeah, I think we need like the feature like latest only sync, you know, but lazy sync is helpful for now, is good enough for now. Uh, yeah, there is actually a feature in Bannersnatch to only sync the latest releases of Python packages, um, which we do support, I'm pretty sure. I need to go yeah. back and check. If not, yeah, we will support it. Because um, yes, we definitely want to cut down all the versions that are no longer used. But even so, yeah. I still think um, there are some pretty big package offenders that take up a couple hundred gigabytes by themselves. Um, they so you might or something? shoot that number in half. Hmm? Are they bundling data or something? Or yeah, like the there's a bunch of um, TensorFlow packages that contain yeah. a bunch of machine learning data. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, uh, okay. And uh, next time I want to share my family videos, I'll use PyPI. Nice, <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Jared, I just want to say thank you. This is great. It's been a great demo. You've covered all the bases that uh, I think we could have we could have asked for on this, and it's a huge addition to Pulp. So thanks very much for your work this summer. Absolutely outstanding. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Jared. It's been great working with you. And we get to talk to him at least part time for the rest of the year. So he's stuck with us. Thank awesome. you, guys. Uh, it's been quite an enjoyable summer, even with the scenario we got put in. Good deal. Good deal. Do you have anything else for us, Jared? Uh, no, I think I think that's all I got for, uh, for you guys today. Outstanding. More to, come. More to come. Outstanding. Mel, I guess we'll turn it over to you, because this is officially your meeting, yeah? Oh, yeah, well, well I think it's... Jared has proven that it's his meeting. Thanks so much, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was quite interesting even for me to see everything that you've done so far. So thank you very much. And that is it.